<clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Today we had uh, this very important council on education and training, and it was the last of the Italian uh, presidency, and the very first of the commissioner, Tibor Navracic. I want to wish, uh, first of all, all the best for a very successful mandate. And uh, the Italian presidency has worked uh, hard to place investment, growth, and job creation at the top of the European agenda. Um, we do think that the education and training sector is at really at the, at the, at the heart of uh, this commitment. Uh, I'll try to summarize the, the main uh, results, of three important results of this council today. First results, um, the council strongly reaffirmed uh, that if we want to uh, relaunch our economies, if you want to have growth development in Europe, we have to, uh, to be more effective uh, uh, in, uh, in our shared growth strategy Europe 2020, and education must be really a key priority inside, uh, uh, for all of us inside the uh, Europe 2020 strategy review. In this respect, the Council stressed that mobilizing resources <clears throat> to raise education and training quality and opportunities should be a priority for our long-term and safe investment. And we do think um, that it's really crucial to coordinate and mobilize all available means from national and regional, and regional funding in the period uh, from 2014, this year, and 2020. Uh, structural funds uh, within a consistent approach. Uh, we also agreed on the need to innovate our working method and remove obstacles uh, which still prevent uh, an effective cooperation with our colleagues uh, in charge uh, for labor, welfare, and social affairs. And this is the reason why we organize uh, in a very innovative way. This is the first time, I think, that this kind of, uh, of scheme uh, has been applied in the Council. Um, um, the, the, the participation of the trio ministers of education yesterday in the Council of Labor and uh, um, mutually uh, the three trio ministers of Labor participated today in our Council in order to share our visions and our perspectives uh, in terms of strong cooperation between these two sectors, uh, which are basically the, 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 the main pillars for uh, Europe uh, in the near future, and also to, re to solve the, 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 the most dramatic uh, question we have, uh, uh, which is the uh, unemployment, the young, 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 especially the young unemployment uh, topic. This is the first result. The second result, uh, uh, is uh, the, the conclusions on entrepreneurship in education and training. We approve today this document. It's a very, very important topic because we are, uh, all of us are aware that uh, Europe must uh, uh, create new opportunities to support education and training institutions in their effort to promote entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not uh, simply a question of uh, the education process, it's also a question of uh, cultural uh, men mentality, it's, it's a cultural change. So we, we are very committed to, to bring in our countries uh, this uh, very, very important uh, uh, objective, uh, and we are sure that uh, it will be another uh, important driver for job creation and development. The third results uh, I want to mention uh, uh, new, more new and more job opportunities uh, can also come by improving mobility. You know, mobility is one of the key words we mentioned last week for researchers, and we mentioned. Uh, more than this uh, today for education, for students, uh, and uh, mo mobility programs participation is one of the, the objective, I think, also of the uh, commissioner agenda in the near future. This is the reason why, as Italian presidency, we strongly believe that this is the most appropriate moment, the right time, to consider how mobility can become a structural part of the education and training of more young students uh, in Europe, and not just for a lucky few, uh, which is uh, still a very, very uh, small percentage uh, in a, in a, on a total amount of uh, the uh, student universities and, uh, in Europe. 
So uh, in order to enhance the competencies of students completing their study in, in any subject area, in, and depending on the, 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 the sector of the fields of uh, uh, career, higher education institutions should organize their curricula so that one more structure, so we define a more structured curricular Erasmus. This is a very important proposal. We discuss about this topic in an informal lunch now uh, at the end of the Council. And uh, I want to uh, underline, I want to emphasize a very nice proposal which emerged from the most part of our colleagues, and we all of us agree about this proposal, which is uh, to uh, arrive uh, in, um, in, the, in, the, in the next uh, presidency by Latvia to a general uh, declaration which could be signed by the, uh, the uh, ministers of education, and this declaration should uh, contain uh, a strong message to our countries, uh, to our universities, in order to encourage, to improve, to better finance a quality program, uh, quality mobility programs, because quality is another very important asset that we have to, to consider in our, in our work. So um, this is the, the summary of our very intensive day of working together. And I'm um, the pleasure to give the floor to the Commissioner Tibor Navracic for his uh, presentation. Thank you so much. And I, of course, I'm available for any, any question you have uh, at the end of the press conference. Thank you, Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, this is uh, really a special day for me, just as Stefania mentioned, because it's my very first Education Council meeting, and in the afternoon there will be the, the very first Youth Council uh, meeting. So I have to prove my ability uh, in representing the Commission uh, in, uh, in two councils at the same day. But, but there is a strong um, interaction between the, two, um, between the two Council meetings because youth employability and the education's role in, in Europe's economic future and, and economic growth are the key, uh, key notes and key notions for, uh, for today's uh, discussions. And uh, uh, just as uh, Stefania mentioned, that there was, a, during the working lunch, there was a spontaneous initiative coming from the, um, from the member state uh, education ministers to endorse and help the Erasmus Plus uh, by a political declaration. I think it is a, a very good idea and a very strong push for, for our uh, project Erasmus Plus, which is probably the, one of the most successful projects of the European integration so far. So today I, um, uh, I was pleased that the Council uh, endorsed the conclusions uh, which emphasize the importance of a coordinated policy approach to entrepreneurship education. This will drive forward actions at European, national at, uh, and institutional level. An entrepreneurial mindset is vital at all levels of our education systems. Evidence shows that it can be taught and it should be considered a key competence to be acquired by young people. Small and medium-sized entrepreneurs create 85% of all jobs in Europe, and more than 4 million new jobs are created every year by newly funded businesses. This is why the Commission regards entrepreneurship education as essential and is putting considerable resources into supporting policy development and exchange into innovative approaches, into funding opportunities, and into building an improved evidence base. The conclusions also support the creation of entrepreneurial learning outcomes at European level, a competence reference framework which will help build coherence in how it is interpreted in practice across Europe. It, I also welcome the emphasis put on high-quality teacher training in entrepreneurial skills and competencies and peer networks of teachers and trainers with input from actual entrepreneurs. Progress is already being made in changing the way institutions view this issue, thanks to the new tools of Age Innovate and Entrepreneurship 360, which help education institutions identify their entrepreneurial strengths and weaknesses in leadership, teaching, learning, and community engagement. 
The Council had an important debate on the economic case for education and training in the context of the mid-term review of the Europe 2020 strategy with the Ministers of Employment from the trio presidencies, Italy, Latvia and Luxembourg, and, uh, uh, and in the absence, in the painful absence of uh, Madame uh, Tyson, who, uh, who uh, attended the funeral ceremony of, uh, of the Mother Queen in, of Belgium. The evidence shows clearly that investing in quality education is a proven way to build jobs, growth, and competitiveness. The three main themes of the debate can be briefly summarized as follows. First, education exercises a positive influence on economic development, including on jobs and growth. For example, in 2013, the share of early school leavers stood at 12%. This means that 5 million citizens do not have basic formal qualifications. It is not surprising that more than 40% of them are unemployed. Second, there is an increasing risk of an investment gap. Too many countries have reduced their investments in education. This trend needs to be turned around. Increasing investment in education is crucial if we aim for top quality education. The question of investment in education is now at the top of the EU policy agenda. On 26th of November, President Juncker presented an investment plan for Europe. One of the key areas to be targeted for investment under the plan is education. Within the Commission, I'm already working with Vice President Katainen to deliver on the education aspects of the new investment plan. Third, we should pursue more analytical work on what works well in education. We should exchange experience and learn from each other how efficiency can be improved. The more we improve the efficiency of our systems, the more we strengthen our case for the economic value of education and for increased investment in it. The background to the discussion this morning is the review of the Europe 2020 strategy. The strong economic argument merely underlines the point that education should continue to be a cornerstone of the EU strategy for jobs and growth. The visible expression of this is the headline target that should be maintained. We will come back to these questions in 2015 when we discuss future working priorities under ET 2020. Later today, education ministers took part in a lunch debate focusing on how to promote learning mobility in higher education and how studying or training abroad can add real value to a student's learning, ex learning experiences. With member states committed to having 20% of their graduates studying training abroad by 2020, the need to create more structured mobility opportunities within higher education programs is key. We can achieve this is making greater use of embedded mobility with fixed mobility windows in degree programs, for example. Although Erasmus Plus encourages institutions to test innovative arrangements for organizing study and training abroad and for jointly designing courses for, with partner universities, member states authorities need to create the basic framework conditions for successful mobility. They might consider using targeted funding for institutions, ensuring that financial support systems are compatible with mobility and, where possible, providing additional grant schemes using national and perhaps structural fund resources. And undoubtedly, there is an unequivocal political support for, for the development of the Erasmus Plus and giving them a solid financial background in the future. Thank you very much.